What's going on, everybody? Good afternoon. We are here on this Wednesday, and it's not going to be a typical Wednesday because usually Wednesday you get your first injury report of the week, but that's not going to happen this week because we don't play. Got a bye week, so there's probably going to be less information out there. There's going to be less news. I saw on, I think it was Instagram yesterday, Leonard Williams is already on vacation. The players get some time off. Uh, everybody gets to regroup mentally and we're probably not going to be hearing a lot of like roster news. We're probably not going to be hearing a lot of injury updates because the team isn't together in the way that they usually are to actually get into that stuff. So next few days are going to be slower than usual. We'll get to the weekend. Obviously we'll see what happens across the NFL, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it's not going to be as active. There might be maybe just three videos a day for a little bit here. It depends on what happens. It depends on what can be discussed. But I do want to make a quick little video to talk about this. This is the closest thing we have to uh, Seahawks news right now. Um, it involves tight ends. And the Seahawks have brought four tight ends into town for workouts on Wednesday. So there's clearly something going on here. And Corbin Smith basically outlines what that probably is in the tweet. Noah Fant is probably still not okay. And they're still a little bit worried about him even after the bye week, which is reasonable given that it's a groin injury, right? Groin injuries are something that can linger on longer than you would expect. And th it kind of makes sense that you would kind of be looking into options in case Fant continues to not be able to go. Because Farrell Brown has become a complete non-factor. Brady Russell's basically a fullback. And A.J. Barner is a rookie. Now, he's the guy that we're excited about right now. He's the guy that we're intrigued by. I like what he's doing. I well acknowledge that he made a few pretty bad mistakes in that Rams game. And there were quite a few people in my stream chat after that game. And I even saw some comments of people hating on A.J. Barner because of that game. But um, I will say this. A.J. Barner is a guy who can play both ways. He can block and he can get involved in the passing game. And that may change dynamics for the Seahawks offense at least a little bit after the bye week if A.J. Barner becomes the main guy, which he will almost certainly be if Noah Fant is out. And I'm not saying he's going to fix anything because the offensive line is so bad, so incompetent outside of one guy that I don't think a good blocking tight end is going to change anything. But it is worth noting that I think he can at least help balance out the offense a little bit in the little areas that he can actually affect the way the offensive line plays. So Noah Fant may be missing some time. So anyway, the four tight ends, since we haven't talked about that yet, uh, to go to, over to the article that Corbin uh, wrote earlier today, Nikhil Harry was one of them. Now you guys might remember Nikhil Harry. He was a first round pick. Um, I think in the DK Metcalf draft, he was one of the many receivers that ended up being a complete train wreck in the NFL that went ahead of DK Metcalf. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that uh, that guy has now apparently moved to tight end, which makes sense because he was always a bigger guy and he is a good blocker for a receiver. He just didn't have receiver skills. Also working out with the Seahawks are Tyree Jackson, not familiar with him. Trey McKitty, I remember him from college. I remember scouting him and looking at him in the uh, draft that he came out in. And Garrett Prince. So that's the pool we're picking from. I don't have a strong take on who it should be, of course, because I don't think there's a particularly strong take that you can have here. None of these guys are going to be anything more than practice waters initially. <coughs> um, maybe they get activated as like the third slash fourth tight end along with Brady Russell. But the odds of them actually playing meaningful snaps at any point are obviously very low. So this isn't a big thing. The big thing would be if Noah Fant is out. And whatever you want to say about Noah Fant, he's actually been fairly productive in the passing game overall this year. And what he does when we're trying to stage late game comebacks is actually very significant. Um, there have been quite a few games where Noah Fant has gotten very involved as a receiver when we're down by a score and we're driving, trying to tie or win the game, or when we're trying to fight our way back into a game. 
And that sounds like a little bit of maybe a backhanded compliment. It, it's not. Not everybody can do that. That's stuff. Noah Fant's more athletic than the average tight end. He's going to get more on those plays than the average tight end, even if the defense is a little bit on their heels. So I'm not taking that away from him. But at the same time, I don't think a lot of Seahawks fans would be extremely sad if they think Noah Fant's going to miss a game or two because it does give A.J. Barner a chance to show what he can do, and we know that it can be at least more well-rounded than what Noah Fant gives you. And overall, I think... Most people would acknowledge that Noah Fant has been a disappointment this season. It hasn't been the monster impact we were hoping for, especially when the team gave him that contract, presumably because they had plans on using him more. And I understand that the offensive line is worse than anybody could have imagined, but um, at the same time, Fant's probably out of here after this season, and A.J. Barner will not be out of here after this season. He might be tight end one going into next season, depending on how this season ends. All right, so that might be all the real Seahawks news we get today, and it's barely news, but um, <clears throat> we'll we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll probably start doing some draft stuff this week because I know a lot of Seahawks fans are already mentally trending towards the draft because of um, the fact that the t season is not going terribly well and the team's been so bad over the last month and a half. So I might do some draft stuff a little bit later, and if the team has anything to say, I will talk about it. But uh, yeah, it could be a little bit of a slowdown just because I know there isn't a tremendous appetite for a lot of Seahawks talk right now because the team has let us down the last month and a half. And it especially hurts after a promising start where you went 3-0 and and things were actually looking okay. And yeah, now you're here. But uh, keep an eye out. I will continue to do as many videos as I can. I will continue to talk about the things that I find to talk about. Um, I honestly, the, the, I think the main issue is every conversation around this team right now seems to involve the offensive line, right? Like if you're talking about this team right now, you're either talking about the offensive line or I guess Geno Smith. And those two things are very intertwined. And there's only so much I can say about that. There, I don't want to make three videos a day about Geno Smith and another three videos every day about the offensive line. I could probably do it. Um, just today. The number of cut-ups I've seen of the offensive line getting completely pistol-whipped in a way that should never happen for an NFL offensive line. I could make videos just based off of that stuff, but I don't want to do that because I've already said, I think that this might be overall the worst offensive line Schneider's ever put together. And that includes 2017, which I did not think could be beat. That was the final Tom Cable year. I think that Schneider has found a way to beat it. Because this team fails in pass blocking and run blocking at egregious levels. And I don't know if you could have said that about the 2017 one. <clears throat> they could run block. They just didn't have a running back that they could run block for because everybody got hurt. And we had Eddie. That was the Eddie Lacy year. So how many times can I say that in a video? How many times can I talk about this offensive line in a video before it, it just becomes a tired argument? All right. See you guys maybe later today. Uh, if not, see you tomorrow. Typical stuff.